everybody, this is Diana from So Very Crafty, and we are here today to make this adorable little bunny drawstring bag. How cute is that? Now this is a project that I got from Bernina on their website, and I will put a link to their website uh, on the comments section of the video. Um, you will be able to get the pattern for this project and um, instructions for it as well. But here we go for this particular little bunny bag. Um, I use contrasting fabrics so that I could have contrasting ears on one side or the same ears on the other side. It doesn't really matter. Either way, this is a fun little bunny bag to make and I hope that you enjoy this project. Um, I urge you to subscribe to my channel, ring that bell for notifications for future videos from So Very Crafty, and let's get started on how to make this terrific little bunny bag. Okay, so what do we need for this? We need a pattern for the main part of the bag and a pattern piece for the ears. And I will place these pattern pieces in the description section of the uh, video and you can just click on the link and get to them. This is a project that I got from the Bernina sewing website. Um, so if you're interested in Bernina, you can also click on the link for this pattern and get any of their products or find out where you can get them. Um, once you have your pattern pieces, you're going to cut two lining main bag pieces and two outer main bag pieces and two each of the ear pieces as well. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to cut a six and a half by one and a half inch a rectangle of fabric that we're going to use for casing for the drawstrings on this drawstring bag. And for this drawstring bag, I had some uh, cording that matched my pink that I wanted to use. So I'm using cording, but you could use a, a 1 8 inch ribbon or some other type of cording if you want for your drawstrings. So what do we do to get started? The first thing we're going to do is we are going to prepare our ears and we're going to take one outer piece and one lining piece and put them right sides together and we are going to stitch all the way around uh, the sides and the top but we're going to leave this bottom open there's no reason for us to do that and we need it to be able to turn our ears right sides out when we're done. So I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and I'm just going to whip around these ears using a one half inch seam allowance. Now I'm not going to show any sewing in this video because it's all straight stitch sewing. There's no reason for me to really uh, give you videos of me sewing on the sewing machine. So just keep in mind that you want to line these up right sides together and stitch along the sides to the to the top and back down the other side. And I will be right back and we'll go on to our next step. Okay, now we have our ears. We're gonna flip them right sides out through the bottom that we left open. And just poke out the point and you can do that with your finger or some turning uh, device like that purple thing or a chopstick, whatever. Now we're going to flip the other one. Okay, now we have two ears that we have uh, placed right sides or right sides out. 
The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to take one of our outer pieces and we're going to place our ears with the lining side down. And the reason we're doing the lining side down is so that when the ears flip up, we will have a contrasting fabric to our outer fabric to make it just that more, much cuter. So now that I have the ears, I'm placing them basically in the center of my body part and about 3 8 inches apart. And I'm just going to run a stitch right across here to hold those in place and then we'll move on to our next steps. Okay, now that I have added the ears to the outer piece, I'm going to take one of our lining pieces and I'm going to place that right sides together and simply stitch with a half inch seam allowance right across the top. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the other side of our bag without the ears, placing those right sides together and I'm going to stitch right across the top using half inch seam allowance. And once that's done, I'm going to come back and we'll move on to our next step. Okay, now we have stitched our two pieces at the top and we're simply going to flip over our lining so that it's on the lining side on both of these pieces. And I would encourage you to press these seams so that they're nice and flat. The next thing that we're going to do now that we have our two pieces is we need to make our casing. We're going to take our six and a half inch by one and a half inch piece of uh, outer fabric. We're going to fold the centers to the inside and then we are going to fold the short sides 3 8 inch and then 3 8 inch again to cover up the raw edges. And we're going to do that uh, for both of our pieces. So I'm going to head over to the iron now and I'm just going to uh, press these down so that we can then add them to our outer pieces. Okay, so now we have our two pieces that I've pressed slightly and our casing. We are going to place our casing about one inch from the top seam on both of our pieces in the center. And I'm just going to pin this together. And I'm going to do the same for the other side. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we are simply going to stitch this casing along the top and the bottom, leaving these ends open so that we'll have some place to put our cording. And I'm just going to use a, like a 1 8 inch seam allowance for this um, so that we have plenty of room to put our casing or ribbon, whichever it is you choose to do. So I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and I am going to stitch down these casings. Okay, we now have our casings in place. We're going to push our outer pieces, right sides together, our body pieces, and I'm going to stitch using a zigzag stitch about a quarter inch all the way around. And the reason I'm using a zigzag stitch is there are going to be some raw edges on this project because this is a beginner project. Um, there will be some raw edges on the inside and I want to make sure that those raw edges don't fray. Now you could use an overlock machine or an overlock stitch on your standard machine if you have it, 
but because this is a beginner sewing project, most beginner sewists don't have those kinds of options available to them. So instead, I'm just going to use a basic zigzag stitch all the way from the top, all the way around to the bottom, leaving the, open, the top open. So I'm going to do that and come right back. Okay, now we have stitched this using a zigzag stitch all the way around. Next thing we're going to do is just turn our bag right sides out. There's our little bunny bag, and now we need to thread our cording through our casings on both sides. Now I'm going to use a safety pin. Ordinarily I would use a bodkin for this, but because this is a beginner sewing project, I'm just going to use a safety pin to um, thread this right through the casing. Now we have finished putting our cording in and the important thing to note about putting in the cording is you are going to want to put one piece of cord all the way through one side around and through the other side then you're going to put the other piece of cording going in the opposite direction and tie the ends together so that when you're finished you can just pull it tight and you have this adorable little bunny drawstring bag. I hope you enjoyed this project. This was a fun one. Perfect for Easter treats. Perfect for any time of year, to be honest. The little ears are just adorable on this little drawstring bag, and it is so simple to make. If you enjoyed this project, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up and ding that bell so that you can get notifications for all of my uh, so very crafty videos as they come out uh, from time to time. So that's all we have today. I hope you enjoyed this little bunny bag. It's a fun one. Thank you, and I will see you next time.